Our climate is changing and with it our world. Scientists and ecologists have been studying the ecosystem for years now. They have come up with numerous analyses and results. Though some of them are of relative concern, others are shocking. All pointing to only one direction. The earth is warming up too fast. And with it, the consequences have started to emerge. The coastlines are shrinking. Centuries old ice sheets are breaking. Deserts are spreading. And storms are growing stronger. The emission of greenhouse gases from industrial activities and economic growth have triggered a phenomena so intense that it is being called the greatest challenge of our times. Pakistan is now said to be amongst the top 20 countries which will be hit hard and fast. The diverse climatic zone coupled with weak economic structures exposes the country to a decline in all the critical socio-economic sectors such as water, agriculture, energy, basic health and livelihood. Alarmed by these analyses from national and international scientists that the earth is warming up twice as fast as predicted, people from Pakistan and around the world are calling on governments and global policy makers to take urgent action in order to mitigate the emissions of heat trapping gases. Because if the scientific predictions are true, then all human beings and all living species on the face of this earth are on the pinnacle of disaster. Global recognition of climate change has spurred the emergence an international climate treaty in the form of United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, a treaty that also establishes legally binding commitments for reduction on greenhouse gases under its Kyoto Protocol. Working within this framework, nations of the world have reached significant agreements on the development of carbon markets to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions and facilitation of adaptation funding and technology transfer to the developing world. Pakistan's interests are largely in the area of adaptation and we have put in place proposals from the side of the developing countries to create uh, structures for the transfer of financial resources as well as technology transfer to developing countries. These same nations are meeting at COP15 in December 2009 to reach agreements that will carry the Global Climate Treaty beyond 2012. Though the whole world is being affected by these climatic changes, those in weakest economic position are expected to be hit hardest by the unfavorable impacts of climate change. As for populations of developing countries, fighting climate change is not just a matter of changing lifestyles, it's a question of survival. The implications for Pakistan's freshwater resources are phenomenal. Forecast for severe water shortage in South Asia and a continued decline in the freshwater availability in large basins like Indus have been confirmed by the IPCC. A disaster for Pakistan's highly irrigated agricultural sector that employs almost half of the workforce and ensures food security of millions. Pakistan has been a water affluent country throughout its history. And now we are not only going through a situation of water stressed country, but water short country. And then along with these uh, uh, uncertainties of the climate change, the problems are going to be compounded. The emerging climatic scenario projected will reduce crop yields of the country by tens of millions in the coming decades. This also puts energy security of Pakistan at risk. 
Variations and declines in average river flows resulting from climate change will affect the potential for hydropower generation, a primary source of energy in the country. Concerns over water security of the country have arisen predominantly from the unprecedented meltdown of the Himalayan glaciers that is being witnessed. Experts fear that a meltdown so rapid will result in complete disappearance of these vital glaciers by 2050. We have estimated that uh, there is almost 1,997 million acre feet of water reserve available in our resources. And if they are under the threat of uh, climate change and if the rate of retreat is increasing, it means we are going to lose these glaciers very quickly. Though, in the long term, the retreat of glaciers mean permanent water shortages. In the short run, however, the accelerated glacier melting is causing increased incidences of flooding in various parts of the country. The geology of Himalayan mountains is considered a young geology. You know, they are not very aged mountains. Therefore, the soil is you know mixture of rocks, mixture of mud, mixture of various other materials, and it is considered very rather weak. And so, some, when the when the water starts overflowing, it starts harming the fabric of the soil, and then it breaks, and then lots of water you know start flowing downstream. So then the villages or the settlements which are ne located nearby in that valley or near the surrounding areas of the lake, they get flooded. Even more vulnerable are the communities living along the coastal belts of Pakistan as swelling ocean levels and sea surface temperatures threaten the coastal ecologies and settlements including Karachi, Pakistan's largest business hub and port city. High intensity devastating cyclones like Yemen of 2007 are expected to become increasingly frequent, ravaging the lives of millions in Sindh and Balochistan. Consequences of climate change like these will result in large movement of people in search of water, food, shelter, and employment in the future, adding